This illegal ball marker is arguably one of the best training aids I've ever seen. Now, I think it goes without saying, you can't use this in competition for obvious reasons. However, I still think, especially when I was using Aimpoint, when I was playing a lot more professional golf, half the skill in becoming a great putter is being able to make great reads, subtle reads, different reads. And this tool right here gives you direct feedback, well, for just that. So I'll show you the link that I got this one from Amazon. It was about 11 pounds, came next day delivery in with Prime. And even though we're gonna talk a bit about this, let's just talk about putting in general and how to read the green, because there's gonna be times when you're playing golf that you can't use this. So how do you train yourself to do what this does well, without it. So I'm going to put it on the hill here so we have quite a clear understanding of basically where this putt's going. Obviously, it's going to be a bit left to right. And as you can see here, the bubble is very much at the top. However, if we were to change where the putt is, maybe the putt isn't over there by the tripod stand. Let's say it was over there by my golf bag. And the difference now is even though the bubble stays the same and we change, let's say the target, we know the putt's still downhill because the bubble's at the top. However, the putt's actually straight. It's not left to right anymore. And again, if we were to go over here, for example, and let's say choose that big tree in the distance, if we were then to obviously switch that all the way around again over here, as you can see, it's still obviously downhill because the bubble's at the top but obviously we're now got a right to left putt and i know a lot of you are thinking simon that's incredibly simple of course it's going to be right to left off there and then left to right but this is where it really comes in the short putts the subtle ones the ones where is it a bit left to right is it a bit right to left is it a straight putt and to be honest golf courses are designed to trick your eyes. If you just purely use your eyes the majority of the time, you're going to get tricked by the landscape telling you, oh, actually, it might be a bit left to right, or actually, it might be a bit right to left. And we've all been there when we've gone, how has it moved that way? Because your eyes are tricking you. Whereas if you were to use your feet and your feeling through them and maybe test yourself against one of these, you might be able to read a quite a few more pats around the green. Right, boys and girls, this is when it gets interesting. And when the training comes in, obviously you can't use this in competition, but you can start training yourself to obviously start reading greens better, mainly through using this. And that's very much aim point-esque, trying to use your feet. The only problem is I've done aim point, tried it in the past. So I found it very useful, mainly because I was committing to putts more. But at the start, it's kind of trial and error. You're kind of going, yeah, that feels a bit left to right. And then you hit the putt, try and measure the stint reading on the green. And did it go in? Yeah, okay, perfect. I think I read that right. Whereas this gives you instant feedback, which I think is a lot better. Not 100% accurate, as let's be honest. This is mainly supposed to stay in the middle of the thing and not obviously veer off to the right and left. But I definitely think we can use it for this situation. We've got four T pegs here, down on the green here on the parks. And as you can see, we're directly in the center, which is good because this should be a straight putt. Dare I say that probably should be leaning a bit more, let's say up this way, because this does feel a bit uphill, not much. And in winter, let's be honest, it's not really gonna make too much difference compared to the summer. However, as we move over to the one on the left-hand side, now this is obviously nine o'clock of the hole, we should now see that bubble veer off to the left-hand side, which we do meaning that you're going to have a left to right putt on this side and because you have a left to right putt on this side the other side should be right to left 100 percent let's see if that is the case we obviously put the marker on the ground and it pretty much mimics exactly what the other side just said now the greens are quite wintry and anyone in england i'd press this down a bit firm because again if you have something underneath it stone rock 
bit lumps of grass. Obviously, it's going to give you a misreading. But from what I've tested, especially from the short, subtle ranges, let's say, I think it's been quite good. The last one. This should be directly in the middle and veering a bit downhill. Again, we put it down by the T-peg, as you can see there. And as you can see, it's basically dead center. Meaning every hole in the golf course has at least two straight putts. One here, one over there. Everything else to either side is going to break into the hole. And as you can imagine, if your putt was over here, it's going to want to grab a tiny bit more onto the left-hand side, as you can see there. Doesn't necessarily a break as much as that one. And again, this is quite a subtle reading. But my whole point about this, and the bit that I loved about Aimpoint, is I just committed to something. This isn't 100% accurate, and nor is your putting going to be 100% accurate. But if you can stand here and go, okay, that's inside left edge, and you're committed to it, well, you're just going to hit a better putt, aren't you? So let's move on to the useful bit, how to actually get you scoring better, and obviously reading the greens better. The big things when it comes to obviously putting, you see pros do this, they stand by the hole here, and they just stand by it. Some close their eyes, some don't, and they're just getting a feeling of where their weight is. You are essentially now the spirit level. You're getting an idea of which way does my feet, body, and weight really want to turn, and then you rate that one to four. My main premise from this and an 11 pound tool is that you can do all this feeling, but now you've got something that you go, well, was I right? And you go, oh no, actually that's saying right to left. And I thought it was left to right. So then naturally you have another go and you think about it and you go, oh yeah, maybe it is a bit right to left. You put it back in your pocket. You think, well, it's winter, so it's hardly going to move at all anyway. Hit the putt. Oh look, it went in. The main thing for me when it came to being better at putting is not standing over the putt being undecisive. Too many putts were wasted throughout my entire career when I was thinking, oh, I think it's this or I think it's that, but oh, I've just waited too long. My playing partner is away and I'm just going to hit it. And then you miss it left side or you miss it right side. Best putting I've ever been is the confidence of knowing. And the good thing about this now, even though it's not 100% accurate and you're going to have anomalies, you can set it down and go, yeah, that's what I thought it was. Now, there's two things that we do need to clarify. One, you're probably thinking, Simon, is there a system for this? Can you find a way of if it hits the two degree or three degree or if I line up the hole with this, how far right should I aim at the hole X, Y and Z? And simply no, mainly because this doesn't really have enough range on it. My point being, if you were to go on a big slope, i.e. let's say this one here, for example, if I was just to put the ball marker down, well, it's just gonna slide all the way to the top of the circle just like that. And to be honest, if it was infinite or there was a different way of measuring it, it'd probably keep on going to somewhere around about here. But my point being with this isn't on the big reads. It's not on this big breaking right to left one. And that's one thing I found with aim point is that you know that this is going to be right to left. You know it's going to be uphill, but what about when it comes off the hill? What about once your putt's finished here and you know it's got a bit of legs left, how much has it got left into the hole? Is it still going to be right to left? Is it still going to be left to right? Is it a double breaker? So you then put it down, aim at the hole. As you can see there, the bubble still wants to veer a tiny bit on the right hand side meaning that yes, the putt's gonna probably come in from the right-hand side, meaning that you could probably adjust your putt from all the way back there. It's not a pure science, this thing. And I think with a bit of practice, you can definitely get a feel for it, but I've held a lot more putts in my life, more down to the confidence, knowing yes, this is the right read and committing to it, than probably it being the right read in the first place. Now, lastly, I thought I'd show you when it kind of hits the stage of three and it's quite temperamental. And what I mean by that is quite a lot of your reading is going to be done in this kind of one degree bracket here. Because as soon as it slides out of the one degree, it pretty much hits the top of the circle anyway. So as you can see there, for example, we're just in the right hand side, which again, we know is going to be a right to left, right to left putt because obviously we're on the other side of the green now. As we take it more up the hill and then put it down, we should see it slowly transition up into the two and three degree mark. But as you can see, I've only taken another foot there 
and we're already in that three degree side. Very rarely have I found when testing this, it wants to sit in that two degree side or even slides into a completely different area altogether. My point being is that the three degrees, two degrees, one degree isn't gonna give you more of a gradient. This here just confirms what potentially you're feeling or you already have in your mind. Guys, if you like this video, potentially you might like to see what Cobra's bringing out next year and the three drivers underneath it, I think are gonna be the best value for money.